All right, guys, it is Tuesday, March 5th, 2024. So I've moved my 55 out and I'm getting ready to resituate Steve's body in the middle of the garage a little bit more so I can have plenty of room to get around it. I need to clean the floor out in here, so I'm gonna use my leaf blower. The floor is really, really nasty in here. Got a lot of leaves blown in here. There's a lot of dirt and dust, especially underneath where his car was. Uh, anyway, I don't wanna be laying in that stuff because now that the body's on the chassis, I need to put all the bolts in it. So this is the part that, uh, it's probably not gonna be very fun. This is what I call a game that the car plays. So this car, uh, the doors are already on it and adjusted, and I have to put body mount bolts in and tighten it down. And generally what happens, especially with a hard top, uh, is when you tighten the body down, it tends to you know, tweak the body at different places and the doors may not open and close very well. It could change the way the doors fit is what I'm saying. So I'm going to uh, play a game and you know, you generally would put shims in there and mess with it. And probably if it happens, probably what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna readjust the doors because it'd be probably faster to do it that way. Now what I mean by a hard top, so I know, know a lot of y'all know this, some of you don't, there is no post here. So, uh, these cars are, you know, they, they move, uh, especially the chassis, it's designed to flex as well. So uh, if you have a hard top and, you know, the, the thing you need to understand is if, if you own a hard top and you have it out in your driveway or your garage or your shop or whatever, and you jack up like the, you know, the right front wheel, you jack it up to pull the wheel off or whatever, don't open the door on either side because what will likely happen is you will chip the paint, either opening it or closing it or both. It won't want to shut uh, because everything will be, you know, tweaked. Uh, unless you've got an aftermarket fancy chassis with all the stifters and stuff in it, which those really, really help. But anyway, that's the plan. Put the body mount bolts in it today and uh, get that part of it at least knocked out. And then I'm probably move on to the brake lines. I got to fabricate all the brake line stuff up here I'm going to be using he has a, a pre-bent kit that was on here before for the front stuff but it's for the rear brake line as well so there's double brake lines going across the front of the frame up here which I'm not a fan of but I ended up changing the rear brake line to the driver side on the chassis instead of the uh, passenger side so now uh, one of those brake lines going across the frame will not be there anymore so they'll look a little bit cleaner so I've got to, I'll have to modify the one for the rear from the master cylinder to the rear, from the proportioning valve to the rear, I should say. But that's a plan. So I guess I'm going to get get after that. But it sure is nice having the body on the chassis. That is a, that, that's a big thing there, you know what I mean? So now I can get on with <laughs> generally the, the lighter side of it. I don't have any more. I don't think there's any more heavy metal fab to do rust repair and that type of stuff. So I got to get that going. Uh, he did uh, mention this this old vintage cooler here. Is it, This is the battery box. There's going to be a battery inside there with the actual battery tray from a trunk mount Taylor battery kit. Anyway, the, he had bought this and that's what he wanted it for. It was a battery box basically to camouflage it so you don't see it so when he was over here he was telling me uh, if that could be polished up and it's aluminum so it can be because I'm with him on this because if you put that old you know patina we'll say uh, cooler in the back of a restored car it's gonna look out of place so especially a permanent fixture like that so you know, he's gonna have the, the trunk will be upholstered. It'll have the new mat and the floor and everything. So it'll look really nice. And then you'll have that old ratty cooler in there. So I'm with him on that. Just, you know, clean it up. So we're gonna, well, I'm gonna polish this. And the, the actual arm of it here is, is coated or plated, CAD plated, zinc plated or something. And it's, it's stained and tarnished so that's not going to you won't be able to polish that so what I told him we should probably go ahead and do is paint the arm so I'm thinking about painting this body color which is the copper pearl color um, there's also 
uh, these brackets here that are riveted on, these will not polish up. So these will also need to be painted. So I'm thinking about removing these three rivets and I'll put it back together with like some 632 Allen button stainless hardware and I will paint these as well. But anyway, uh, gonna see about, I, I know of a vinyl place that's actually a sign shop, but he does stickers and all kinds of stuff over here, kind of close to me. So I think I'm going to see if he can reproduce that. I know he can, he's done stuff for me in the past. Uh, but anyway, we'll put a new decal on it and polish this all up. I'm pretty sure that's, you know what, that might not be... Yeah, I think it is. I'm going to say this may not be aluminum, but I, I think it is. This is just like a grainy looking aluminum, like a pressed, and the ends, and this is smooth. So Anyway, we'll, we'll customize the crap out of that. But. <clears throat> So there's a little bit of work to do to that because, you know, at this point, I could go ahead and put the trunk mat in here and put that in there, bolt the battery box down and run the cables on the frame and do all that stuff. And now I've got to restore a cooler, so, which I don't mind. I love that detail stuff. That, that stuff right there is what I enjoy doing is customizing things. Details is where it's at for me. That's what I like. It, it breaks it out of the normal from everybody else's, so. Uh, that's what we're going to do on that side of it. So, uh, man, I got I got a lot of stuff to do, you know what I mean? So, I guess I'll have to get after it. So, yeah, that's where I'm at. I get after it. So I'm busting all this suspension stuff apart. Um, the spindles and stuff need painted. That one over there's got a lot of surface rust on it, and there's a buildup of grease that they painted over. This one actually is a little bit cleaner looking on this side. So this is a disc brake kit, the bolt-on kit. I'm not sure what brand it is. If I had to guess, it's probably Speedway. But it does have drilled slotted rotors. But the car's set for so long, it's got, my goodness gracious. The car set for so long, it's got tons of spider webs and dust and dirt and all kinds of stuff. So, I mean, look at all the spider web crap on that. That's amazing. The, uh, oh crap. I noticed it on the other one as well. So there is a little clip on the back of this that is supposed to kind of snap and hold that in place. And the other side, it just it just flopped in there and I had to bend it a little bit. This one's a little bit tighter. So all I'm gonna do is kind of bend that out a little bit. Kind of like that. And it'll bend in there a little bit tighter. They spray painted those with cast iron gray because they painted the sleeves and everything I can see. Anyway, that one, it didn't have a whole lot of grease on it. Now this one they put a little bit on. So that's good. So I am going to use a whole bunch of paper towels and I'm gonna get rid of that grease and you know put fresh in there because I think the car set for five years in his shop after he got it back from him. So, I mean the grease, you know, it's probably okay, but I don't know what brand grease this is and I have a certain kind that I like, so I'm just gonna, you know, if I'm doing the car, I'm gonna do it with the stuff that I like. And this spindle shaft is pretty rusty. So I am going to clean the grease off of this and then I'm gonna go in here and uh, emery cloth this to get clean metal. But 
It just needs a little help, that's all. Just a little bit of cleanup. But the, uh, and you can see how rusty the, the bottom of the spindle is there. And there's a grease buildup right there, and they just painted over it. The backside looks good because that's probably when, the, when they had the frame blasted, they didn't unbolt anything. So they blasted it with the drums and everything on it, and then they put the disc brake kit on after everything, because they never took the chassis front suspension apart when they blasted it or painted it. So everything was done all together, and I found sand and a bunch of stuff. The steering linkage was full of sand, and where the pitman arm ball goes up in the center link, which was dumb. <laughs> so anyway, I'm just going to clean these up real good, and... Uh, wire wheel them and I think I'm just going to paint the whole unit because uh, if he gets a wheel that's actually open spoked pretty good you're going to see those gold cad caliper brackets through there and I think it'll look kind of cheesy so uh, I'm just going to go ahead and paint everything black but I'm going to clean it all up first I might even have to blast these spindles a little bit these are pretty rusty man I might go ahead and just blast this whole spindle head to get make sure that rust is off there. Just the normal. When I'm doing something, I like it to be thorough, you know what I mean? So this rotor is actually getting pretty crusty looking. Uh, the one the camera's sitting on is actually in worse shape. Let me get a towel. grease off my hands here and I'll show you the I'll show you the roller right there so what I'm going to do is go in there and sand all that down real clean and then paint the, the hub probably like cast iron gray just respray this whole hub area and we'll get that crusty rust off there and if he gets spoked wheels you won't see that through it what a mess all right, guys, I'm going to run you through a little tech tip of the day here. Um, I worked at a shop. Uh, it's probably been, I don't know, six, seven, eight years ago. Uh, anyway, they had a really young, early 20s guy working in there that, uh, you know, he, he did a lot of mechanic work and stuff. And, you know, he doesn't have quite the experience, but uh, he'll get there. He keeps going. He'll get there. But anyway, I watched him put on a disc brake kit one day on, a, I think it was a Mustang or a Cougar. And I watched him put this cap on with a hammer. He beat that cap on there with a hammer, and it beat it all in. And I told him that this cap spins on the, with this rotor. So this cap, when that rotor is turning, that spins. So if you beat the crap out of this, and that spindle nut doesn't move, it stays there. See what I'm saying? So that basically that nut stays still and that cap will be spinning. So if you beat the crap out of this into that spindle nut, when this rotor with that cap is spinning, that nut will act like a lathe on these sharp edges and just eat the crap out of that metal and you're gonna get that metal all down in your bearing and just ruin the bearing. And it'll end up probably end up putting a hole in that. So don't put those on beating the face of them with a hammer. That's not the way it's done. You either need to get something that goes over the outside to, to meet this lip or what I usually do is stick it on there and then I'll take a, a hammer. I've got a little small tiny ball peen and a, a punch and I'll kind of work it a little bit at a time each side and, and get it on there. So you don't ever want to beat all the one side down and leave the other side up and then beat it down because then it'll just fall off. You want to put it on there evenly. The best way is to put it on with those installers. And it's basically just a piece of pipe or tubing or something that'll fit over that. And I may have some exhaust tubing that'll actually work for that. I've got a bunch of cut off straight pieces over there, little bitty ones. So anyway, I'll try that when I go to put them back on. But keep that in mind. Don't beat your cap on there on the face side with a hammer because that will basically be a lathe on that metal and just eat the crap out of it. All right, guys, starting out on the front brake line setup here, trying to figure out... Uh, the placement of these the, the forward brake line here um, now this car had a different booster master cylinder combo on it it's pretty much similar but this one's all chrome and a nicer looking master cylinder head on it here but anyway the the pre-bent brake line set here 
it has uh, like if you bought a pre-bent brake line set for the frame uh, it would come with a double 3 16 to come up here together if you was doing a dual reservoir master cylinder because originally on these cars the rear brake line runs down this side of the chassis the right side of the car i changed it over to the left side of the car so that's uh, just going to be a lot more simple and there's only going to be one brake line running up here now i was originally just going to build custom brake lines all new but instead of having to buy brake lines and him pay the labor and all that this one you know is already fit for the car to do the front brake line over here so just going to go ahead and roll with this one um now the shop that installed this brake line system there's supposed to be a double of it right here and it's actually over there in the floor they had white plastic like from the hardware store uh brake line clamps or well just plastic clamps and they were self-drilled uh, screws put in them and really cheesy in my opinion so you know over time those would probably get brittle and break and then the brake lines would spring loose and rattle or get up against something really not the smartest thing to use so uh, anyway what i've got is these uh, really nice aluminum uh, two-piece brake line clamps these are 3 16 so i am going to drill and tap the chassis uh, for brake line clamps up here so it'll look really really trick these actually match the ones we use for the fuel line here so it'll all match and it'll look really fantastic so Anyway, this one fits really nice, so I'm just going to try to get the brake line ends, you know, set up where they need to be, and then I'll just go from there and start drilling and tapping the frame. But what I wanted to do was go ahead and put the rubber brake hose on and put the clip in to hold it in place, and then screw this in there, not tight, but get it in there, and then that way I can start doing my clamps, and that way I don't have to worry about that moving or something. So I wanted to go ahead and put the rubber brake hoses on here. So I come over here and i used my impact here and i buzzed off the banjo bolt where the brake hose was on and there's only one ceiling washer there's supposed to be one on each side of the hose so that's dumb <clears throat> but anyway luckily i have some of those here so steve won't have to buy any luckily i have a bunch of them here uh, but anyway i haven't taken them off of that one yet but uh, Anyway, that's that's what I'm basically trying to do right now is get these hoses kind of set in place and I got to put the clips in there and the clips I think are kind of rusty looking if I remember right. So I'm going to uh, clean those up on the wire wheel and spray paint them and put them on there. I think I'll paint them black that way they kind of disappear on the on the deal there. If you buy new ones, they're usually like a zinc plated or a, you know, gold cad and it sticks off of that pretty good. So I'm just going to paint them black so they kind of disappear. <clears throat> but anyway, I thought that was kind of interesting that they only had uh, the one washer. That is really, really not smart. What the hell is that? That is corrosion. This didn't have any brake fluid in it. It never has had brake fluid put in it yet, so I'm glad I took that apart. I'm going to have to flush these lines out and clean them out or something, but... And that is nasty. Anyway, there's one copper ceiling washer. And so anyway, you're supposed to put a uh, ceiling washer. I've seen these aluminum and I've seen them in copper. Uh, there's one that goes up against the head of the bolt. Then you stick the bolt through that and then you stick it on one on this side and then you bolt it to your caliper. So I'm really glad that I buzzed those apart because I'm not repainting the calipers. They've already painted these cast iron gray. So I just wasn't going to mess with them. I was just going to clean them up and put them on there. But I'm glad I did. So I'm going to clean all the bearings and all the, the hardware and stuff, the stuff for the front, clean all that old grease out of there and put all fresh in. So, uh, you know, stuff's got to look pretty decent. But I, that, that surprises me that there's only one ceiling washer on each side. So that's a plan. I need to dig out the clips and uh, go from there. The, the funny thing is, is I don't know where the clips are, and I've went through everything on the car, but I think I have some over there anyway, so it's not that big a deal. So I ended up uh, rearranging the inside of the car. I had the front bench seat leaned up against the bench over there, so it's kind of a nightmare to walk out here from the house door over there. So 
Uh, I ended up putting the seat back in the car. I didn't bolt it in. I just slipped it under uh, the brackets up front. But anyway, it gets it out of my way. And then I rearranged some of the stuff. Uh, put the stuff that I'm not really going to be needing right now in here. And then I put the stuff that I am going to need back here. So it'll be a little bit easier to uh, mess with. So I guess I'll dig out some clips and get started. But... I want to get this brake line set up done and then I'm going to take the other that went across the front of the frame. This is for the rear brakes and I am going to try to reuse this piece. So I'm going to try to rebend it and shape it the way I need and then I'll have to flare that and put a uh, union on it. So this is a stainless steel line and it does take a 37 degree flare so don't put 45 degree flares on stainless steel lines. <clears throat> so, I think my brake line flaring tool, the new one I bought, the fancy one, it has a deal for 37 if I remember right. I hope it does anyway. So, that's where I'm at. Brake lines. Yay! guys so I I pretty much just blasted the areas that it needed on this uh, the one thing that I didn't like was all of the the heavy rust that was on the spindle shaft and on this part here uh, and then there was areas of the spindle and the the knuckle here uh, from where they sandblasted the chassis and painted it they did it all together they didn't take anything apart they just blasted it all together and painted it all together so Normally, I would take all this stuff apart and paint it all separately, but, uh, you know, not building a, you know, an indoor show car or anything like that, so I decided just to, you know, clean these up the best I can and then go through and just paint everything black. That way, these caliper brackets will disappear because this gold CAD, if you have an open style wheel where you can kind of see through the wheel, you can see some of this caliper bracket. Uh, and that gold just kind of stands out. So, you know, I'm going to paint all this black so this will all disappear. But anyway, I got all the rust off of this with the blaster, the spindle shaft here. And I went ahead afterwards, uh, cleaned everything up with brake cleaner. And I run a brush through the the uh, cotter pin hole there and down inside the inside of that and everything to get all the blast media out of there so it doesn't wind up in the bearings. Uh, but anyway, this is thoroughly clean now. There's nothing left on it. So then I took some 400 grit sandpaper and I went around uh, this part here and all over the shaft. And it's basically just to smooth the metal up. Uh, my little blaster, is it's a light duty blaster. It, it doesn't really hard pit anything. Uh, but anyway, it does give it a rough cast look. So I ended up doing the 400 on it just to smooth it out. And the reason uh, right here on this first raised part of the spindle right here, this is where your wheel seal rides, your grease seal on the back of your rotor or your drum. Um, anyway, I didn't want to leave that rough and then put on a new seal and then it kind of chew it up a little bit. You know what I mean? I don't know if it would have chewed it up, but anyway, I went ahead and smoothed it off with 400. Uh, that way it's a little bit slick and uh, should work real nice. But I've got to finish the other one uh, and then I'm going to go ahead and uh, blow these off, wipe them down with wax and grease remover, and then I'm going to go ahead and paint them. And I'm just going to use some uh, black epoxy primer on them, and uh, that'll be pretty much it. So I'm going to get going on that.
spindles are painted. So now I'm gonna get started on these calipers. This was a new uh, kit, disc brake conversion kit for the car, and it's never had fluid put in it. So what they did is they painted these with cast iron gray spray paint. And uh, I mean, you can see it's just flaking off. It's not, they didn't prep it very well. So I'm gonna go ahead and take these apart uh, like the, the brake shoes and crap out of them. Did they silicone that? They did. So they silicone that plate to that. That's interesting. Uh, anyway, I'm gonna pull the bleeder screws out and I'm gonna pull these uh, metal sleeves out here. I don't have to clean these up. I'm gonna scotch bright them uh, really, really nice. I've got some brand new scotch bright and that's flaking bad. I actually might have to take a wire wheel on the drill to these. I don't know that I've ever seen anybody silicone brake shoes or pads, I'm sorry, to a caliper. That's the most amazing thing. So I'm gonna clean these up. Now, uh, Steve wants these body color. I kind of suggested it. I thought it looked kind of nice. Um, we found uh, some Kragers. I don't know if the, that's what he's getting or not, but he did find some Krager SS's. I looked them up at Summit for the back spacings and stuff. I think Kragers look really timeless on the car. And uh, anyway, if he does get Kragers, you'll be able to see these calipers through the front wheels, through the spokes. Uh, so just a little splash of that copper pearl would look really, really cool on there. You know, everything else will be blacked out. So that'll kind of give it just a little bit of pizzazz through the wheel there. Um, so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to have to prep them out. So I ordered some... Uh, engine enamel uh, duplicolor engine enamel online off ebay actually uh, and there it's a seller that i bought stuff before it's like a paint supply place and i bought quite a bit of stuff from him and i ordered that stuff a week ago and i still haven't got it so i messaged him early this morning and i said hey what's up i still haven't received my paint and he hasn't replied yet so I guess I need to see what the heck's going on with that. I'm having a heck of a time with shipping stuff, man. Let me tell you, hell of a time with shipping stuff. But uh, anyway, the way I do the engines, because uh, I got to paint the engine, it's going to be painted body color as well. The way I have always done my engines and it always sticks, I don't ever have a problem. Uh, I use the Duplicolor engine enamel on the engine because it is a high heat uh, paint it also sticks very well if the if the metals prepped good and After it sets for a little while I go through with the gray scotch bright because those are are not as harsh as a red one Or brown whatever color you want to call it And then I lightly scuff it and then I blow it off and then I wipe it down with wax and grease remover And then I put base coat like base coat clear coat for a car urethane paint I do the base coat and then I do the clear and the paint always holds up for me and it stays glossy and it's urethane out of a spray gun for a car, so it resists gas and chemicals and that type of stuff. So it's a little bit more durable. Now, I have never overheated an engine with that paint on it. Now, if you got one really, really hot, it may delaminate. I don't know, but I've, I always watch my temp gauge. But uh, I can tell you for a fact that I've been doing that way since the late 90s. And it's worked very well for me in the past. It's base coat clear coated in my 55. It was base coated in my salon. I'm... I mean, a lot of cars, a lot of cars I did. So I know it works. But anyway, I'm waiting on the Chevy orange spray paint to come in because the orange is a good base coat for this copper color. But <laughs> it's kind of holding me up. Uh, anyway, once I get the, the Duplicolor engine enamel here, I can shoot this stuff and then get some body color on that. That'll look really, really nice. So. I can tell you another fiasco I'm going through right now is I ordered a pair of tires from eBay and I ordered some 15 inch tires, just a pair, and they were 100 and 136 or $138 for the pair delivered to the door. And anyway, they, these is what the FedEx guy was rolling up to my house right here. He was rolling those up here and I said, those aren't my tires. 265, 65, 17. I ordered 15s so 
<laughs> anyway, I ordered a street tire, and those are more of a off-road, well, not off-road, but you get what I'm saying. They're like a all-terrain almost looking. They're bulky looking to me. So I went in and messaged these guys and told them, I said, I got the wrong tires. And they have done nothing but make a big fiasco. It takes them almost two days before they reply back when I send a message through eBay. Uh, I asked them if they could just send out my proper size tires and FedEx can pick these up at the same time. And they want me to drive to the FedEx place and ship those for them. Uh, it's not my problem. I'm not spending money and fuel and my time to drive to the FedEx place to drop these off. I'm in a kind of an outskirt town, so I'd have to drive to Tulsa. I'm just not interested in doing that. So pretty irritated with these people. Then I get a phone call from a guy at FedEx and he said, I think we have a pair of tires here for you, but it says delivered on the screen. And, and I said, I got the wrong tires. These aren't my tires or somebody else's. They have my address on them, but it's actually a FedEx sticker stuck on there with my address on it. The, the ship too from the tire company, that's not me. Those are supposed to go to Louisiana. So anyway, it's just been a big mess. The FedEx guy said, uh, well, we can go ahead and send these out Monday. And I was like, okay, great. Waited all day Monday, nothing. Like 15 minutes till 9 p.m. And I go in there and it still says out for delivery because they have to pick these tires up. I have to be here, you know what I mean? So turned into a big mess. So yesterday, I just said, heck with it. I went to a salvage yard in Kansas with a friend of mine, Scott, so I wasn't here. And I come back, there's no paper on the, you know, the door that says they were here or anything like that. So I go in and check the deal and it says uh, delayed, and there's an exclamation point or something. And I'm like, what the heck, man? How do you screw up this bad on delivering something to somebody? So I got up this morning and checked it and it says out for delivery for today. So we'll see if it shows up again today, my correct size tires. It, this has been the biggest mess uh, with these tires I have ever seen, but golly, I'll be glad to get the correct size tires here. But anyway, that's the fun I'm having. How much fun are you having?